All right, all right. Let's start, mommy. Let's start. All right, Jean. Ready in Chamesh. Abba, Shalosh, Stein. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at. Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's at podcast. With Christina P. Hello, mommies. Come see me. I'm in Vancouver. Uh, February 16th, and then I go to the Neptune Theater in Seattle. There's some tickets left on the early show. Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, and then I added an early show at the Gramercy Theater in Judor Titties, March 23rd. The Ridgefield Playhouse in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and then I'm part of the Netflix Festival at the Masonic Lodge in L.A., May 8th. ChristinaPOnline.com for tickets. Buy my lipstick if you... With me is uh, just one of my favorite comedians, uh, fellow Canadian, Harlan Williams, everybody. Yeah, man, thanks. Host of the Harlan Hideway podcast. Yeah, thank you. And thank you. also a regular fixture in my home because you voice Bob of Puppy Dog Pals. Yeah, yeah. And I've been listening to you for years. How you doing, pups? <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck? Let's go on an adventure. <laughs> so Bingo, weird. Rolly, let's go. Yeah. Right? You're so sweet. I always think, I mean, unless you're secretly a deviant serial killer, that's really nice that you do children's cartoons. Stuff. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And no, I'm not a deviant. You're not. You're just goofy. You're so silly. That's what I love about you. Yeah. Can I tell you what I learned uh, when I featured for you a million years ago <laughs> in Indian Apple Tits at the um, oh, yeah. fucking Crackers? And I don't think it exists anymore, the one that we Yeah, did. thank God. Thank God. It was terrible. Yeah, it was, it, was like a, a, it, a, it was a club stuck perpetually in like the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Remember the 80s comedy yeah. boom? And then- they built that club and it's like nothing changed. Nothing. The stains on the carpet were from the yes. 80s, everything. And then it was like the Charlie Chaplin was the um, yeah the mascot. It was and, the theme, yeah. And every comic will be like, it's a Hitler's comedy club, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, you're right. It's very old. And, yeah. But what I learned from you as a feature act, I was so like, stoked to open for you because i've like i've loved you for so long oh thank you yeah. wow you're so funny and and what i learned from you is to not afraid to be like don't be afraid to be silly because you'd always be like how you doing snowflake pony or whatever the <laughs> fuck it is you're calling people and i was like he's so bright like you're so okay with being silly yeah yeah you gotta be man it's comedy yeah comedy is silly equals comedy Comedy equals silly. Right. Let's go. But stand-ups can get, like, we get really heavy sometimes. And I don't know be why. be cool. I don't know why. <laughs> be silly. I know. Right? Yeah, and I love your combinations. Do you still do that where you call people, like, silly, silly things? I just call people whatever, whatever comes out of me. <laughs> like, it's just I'll look at someone and just let it pop and drop. Yeah. You hey, know? Sea lion starfish. Sea lion face. Yeah. Corn on the cob clit. Uh, turkey teriyaki tits. Fungus <laughs> face. Uh, toenail Tommy. Broccoli teeth. Uh, potato salad <laughs> Willie. Starfish tits. Carol Burnett twat. Uh, thunder bunder. Glinder dunder, the little Indian boy. You know, whatever. <laughs> Just whatever. Just let yeah. it roll. Let it rip. Let it rip like a truck rolling down the five and a hailstorm on a Thursday fucking <laughs> Bakerfield's night. <laughs> hit an elk, hit a deer, hit an old lady in a wheelchair and <laughs> pray for fucking coleslaw in the morning. Right? What are you talking about? <laughs> ah, it's so much fun to be stupid. How do you get so free? How are you free to be stupid? <laughs> free? You yeah, know what? You're the, so free, Harley. You just, you just, you just, you just let let the world flow, man. You, yeah. You let it. You gotta. If you want to be free, be free. There's no if answer, you really. Be free, be free. If you want to be free, <laughs> be free. Remember that yeah, that old yeah. movie, Born Free, with Elsa yeah, the Lion. Yeah. Yeah, born then, 
Born Free. Right? And then, like, yeah. cut to 10 years <laughs> after that movie, Elsa ate the lady that set her free. Oh. Remember? <laughs> yeah. So, free is only good for so long till a lion <laughs> eats you. For so long. Yeah. Did you have nice parents? You're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're like, yeah. Were they nice to you? Yeah, great parents, amazing. You, parents. Seriously, you're yeah. Canadian. Oh yeah, they were they're amazing. Yeah, I can maybe there's something because I've yeah maybe the silly people like you're built different. Like maybe they did they encourage you and stuff? And... Not really. <laughs> I think they're a bit scared. When I told my mother I was I wanted to get into comedy, this is for real. Yeah, she's like. Hey, what? And I go, a stand-up comedy. She goes, you know, I have a friend up at the mall who works at M -M -M Muffins, and I'm going to call her and see if I can get your job up there. Hey? She used to say A hey, after A. Hey? John, will you get my sweater? Hey? Like, berserk. Was there, were you an only child? But there was actually a place at Fairview Mall called M -M -M Muffins. Well, right. It sounds like it would be because it's very specific. It's right. Like it was like four, four M's. M's. I think, yeah. I don't know if a stutterer owned it, Yeah. but M -M -M Muffins, <laughs> or maybe, I don't know if they were autistic or they had a stroke, but I never what? did get over to C -C -C Corn Dog. <laughs> But, uh, Why yeah. the mum mum were the M's shaped like muffins? Like no, why it, would was they just, add? it was just it, to me. It was just an extra expense in making a sign. If sure. you ask me, like, surely it's just a stupid. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> this guy wanted four M's. Like yeah, you very know? specific choice, and they only sold muffins. Uh, clearly, yeah. Maybe I'm mispronouncing it now. That maybe it was a <laughs> mm, muffins. I always, oh, my whole life. Oh, I think life, you're right. It is mm, mm, muffins. I had like a bowel problem. Mm. Mm, muffins. <laughs> muffins. Yeah, I thought my whole life, right until now, I thought it was m -m -m muffins. <laughs> Holy shit. It Thank just you. Had a Pajitsky effect. That's what it's called. A when what you, effect? A, that's my real last name, Pajitsky. It's, um, it's when you're doing something one way your whole life. And then one day you're like, oh my God, dude, that's totally fucking wrong. Like, for instance. Wow. I've been, um, I've always loved soft boiled eggs. Ooh. I know, I know, Ugh. I know. But look, I thought they were not for me because I'm like, who can make that at home? That's so hard. It's not hard at all. You know what you do? Because it's soft. Yeah. I thought like maybe you had to be like a really good chef to do it. You just have to like boil them for like seven minutes instead of 10 or whatever. Just so you know, I know you're married and stuff, I'm but if, you, if you're ever single again, like yeah. one of the biggest turnoffs. <laughs> watching a woman engulf a fucking egg. It's like it's like you're watching the Discovery Channel and a monitor lizard just invaded like a grackle's nest. Yeah, that you think that's a deal breaker for like you? Like a woman sucking down an egg and then yeah. you bite it in half and then there's the yolk. Mm. It's just like it just all it says is bad breath, farts, <laughs> and acne. Like just don't. I'm just telling you. I know you're happily married, but it's coming. It's I coming. look in Segura's you think so? eyes. I think, oh, I think he's losing his mind too, oh, Harlan. Demented. He's probably yeah. at a truck stop right now, waxing up a <laughs> Chinese invader, whatever that means. <laughs> a Chinese invader. <laughs> Wait. So, are you an only child? <laughs> Whoa, easy, Simba. Dial it down, Nacho. Let's get on the Ferris wheel and roll it backwards. I feel like I got to know you a little bit. <laughs> you do? Yeah. You will. It's been years. It ain't happening Not here. Not today. No. We go to Cracker Barrel later. <laughs> oh, is that, yeah. your, is that your jam? Oh, they have great jam, but I really like the honey <laughs> butter better. <laughs> um, I've, got, I've got four sisters. Can you believe it? Oh, okay. And that... I'm in the middle. Okay, but that explains maybe why you're like nice and stuff and you do like children's cartoons and you're um pleasant i think when you're a boy know. raised around girls it means mm. you understand girl energy and you're nicer well i, I found that my energy uh, my sister sort of screwed me up a little bit really because they were so normal like my sisters were like so even keeled yeah and not that men and women aren't even keeled but I grew up thinking all women were as oh, level and as no. even keeled as my four sisters. So when I started kind of getting into the world of dating and, and relationships, I was like, what, what is happening here? Yeah, women are crazy. 
Like that there, there's some women, there's some men that are crazy. I don't want to like pigeonhole women, but I, I, I was like, I just thought all women were like my sisters because that's what I grew up around sure. on both sides. And they're just like, they never caused any problems. They were, never had fits. They really? were like, yeah, they were so normal. Like it, even to this day. Wow. I just bl- it, So when I got out there in the real world, yeah, you, in the Nuttyville. Yeah. Whew, what kind of broads are you, were you dating? It didn't matter. It could be anyone. It could be, uh, you know, someone that worked at the zoo. <laughs> could be the girl in charge of the Galapagos tortoise. Yeah. Or it could have been the girl fixing the, you yeah. know, the Mars bars over at the 7-Eleven or arranging the, the chips. Yeah. I love a girl who can arrange chips on the <laughs> chip rack. I, it doesn't matter. There are all kinds of girls. Yeah. But men are nutty, too. I can't sit here and just say women are nutty. Well, here's, I don't know, you know. Fuck. But it's hard. It's it's, it's, it's hard. It's I tough. I feel like it's different because men are like stuffers, you know. Like, like I feel like men will sit around and talk about bullshit like sports and weightlifting just so you don't have to talk about anything yeah. relational. And then women, I get really itchy when like women want to get emo with me and talk about their feelings. I get so fucking uncomfortable. What's emo? Like emotional, short oh, for emo. emotional, where you're like, like I had a friend like con- like tell me her feelings the other day, like we were in a thing, mm. and I was like, dude, I'm gonna barf all over myself right now because I don't, Whoa. I don't like those kind of like. Why that's girl intimate? Talks. I don't like it. Right, right, right. So you don't like to, to, you don't like an intimate, close talk with the girls. No. So you just want to keep it surfacey. I like it surface level. Yeah. What if you got something on your mind, like some emotional bullshit, like Segura's out at. Yeah. You know, Pizza Hut in the back <laughs> room, <he> slamming some <laughs> yeast around before they throw it in the oven. The Chinese truckers, what's he doing? <laughs> the invaders. Chinese invaders. The Chinese invaders. Like, uh, what if you need to get a load off your chest? I preface it with like, hey, I'm horrified to do this right now. I'm very ashamed of my, I don't like Whoa. this. This is terrible. Why? And you, then. You can talk to me about anything. <laughs> I'm good talking to women because I had four sisters. Yeah. So if you want to do that with me and feel but, safe, like right here and right now. You think so? Although but, but, I don't necessarily feel safe. Uh, I think uh, everybody's sort of noticed you're sitting in like Count Dracula's chair. <laughs> like seriously, blood candles on the table. Your last name's like Transylvanian or something. It smells like tibia and femur in here. You're pretty pale. <laughs> I only see you at night. I've never seen you outside. (laughs) Vampire. Easily. Thank you. I wish. Would you be a vampire if you could? I don't know. Do you know eternity? Oh, that's eternity's appealing, but only at night. (laughs) I mean, you know what I mean? I want to see kids playing in the park. I want to. I uh, want to tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go fishing. Wait, that's a really good point. I never thought of it. Right Is at that... night, it's like how many discos can yeah. you go to? How many twenty-four hour drive-throughs? <laughs> how many Whataburgers can you guzzle down before the sun cracks over the horizon? I didn't think of that. Like that's yeah. the trade-off for eternity. Is like it's yeah, but it's at night. You and tell me, Count day. Yorga. Where did you get that chair? What? Oh, what? We all know the value of a good night's sleep. We feel better, look better, have energy to spare. The list goes on and on. Yet sleep never made my to-do list. I guess because it seemed like a lost cause. Either I was too hot, too cold, or just too something. That is until I discovered cozy earth bedding. Oh my gosh, I love these sheets so much. They're just cool, they're silky, they're smooth, and they keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I don't know how, but Cozy Earth is life-changing luxury. Their best-selling bamboo sheet set is made from 100% premium viscose from bamboo, which makes them naturally temperature-regulating and breathable, so you'll sleep more comfortably all year round. Cozy Earth's sheets are uniquely soft and only get softer with every wash. If you've never tried Cozy Earth, I've got awesome news. You can save up to 35% off Cozy Earth right now. But hurry, this offer won't last long. Go to CozyEarth.com and enter our promo code WMMA at checkout for up to 35% off. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code WMMA, CozyEarth.com. It's officially soup season. Make sure you get 
all of the ingredients you need to master your recipe while getting cash back on your purchases with Ibotta. What is Ibotta? Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code WMMA when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code WMMA. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code WMMA. What distant mountain in Transylvania did that thing come from? I know, it's so great. Good Lord. Were you not green, not goth in high school or anything? Goth? What was your jam? Are you into death metal? What do you like? Iron Maiden was my thing. Iron Maiden. Stop. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. You're so sweet and Mm -hmm. like, but the inside. Yeah, I loved it. I I saw them in their first concert ever in North America. Wow. In Toronto. Yeah. I still have the t-shirts. Yeah. I bought two t-shirts. I still have them. Yeah. Original Iron Maiden t-shirts. Do you still Up listen yours. to it? Do you still listen to Iron Maiden in your car? Now and then. Yeah. It's just fun. It, it's it's nostalgic. It's energetic. Yeah. You know? The original singer, too. Wow, there was a, that's There was right. originals. He did two albums. He did the debut album, and then he did Killers. And then, I don't know, they got rid of him or he quit. And then they got this other guy who's good, but he's a typical... He's a stereotypical heavy metal guy, right? Oh. He, he fits, you know, long hair, high voice, on a, yeah, you know, that guy. Yeah. But the original singer had kind of a more quirky, he didn't look like a heavy metal guy. And he gotcha. didn't sound, he had his, and his so I sort of liked him Let's better. Look, can we look this Paul guy Paul Deano, up? I think, Let's was his name. Let's see who he's talking about. You have, you have very passionate feelings. Yeah, the, well, the, the, I'm letting them out. Unfortunately, you won't. But <laughs> I won't. Don't who you knows do. the secrets of a vampire? Uh, oh, this is the guy you're talking about. The first guy? Yeah, Paul yeah. Diano. Oh, he's in a wheelchair. Well, What happened? Vampire. Poor guy. Yeah. Isn't that... Who's that guy beside him? Go by... Isn't that your husband? Who's the guy? Who's <laughs> the, yeah, there's your, made it. There he is. I wish. That's what he's doing behind your back. I could see you doing this for a living. What? Being a heavy metal singer. Have you ever done it? You were in a band. Are you musical? I've yeah. I, I've I've sung. It's just yeah? for a hobby. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What kind of music? This kind of music? No, I actually write a lot of love songs and stuff. Stop. Yeah. Stop. I have, I have an album on. Uh, look online. You'll see. It's no, called "The can't. Love Song Years" by the Cousins. What? And then I have another album called "Rattlesnake Love" by the Cousins. <laughs> Cousins, yeah. band name. My cousin's in a band called the Bare Naked Ladies. Oh, right. I so know we, those guys. So we grew up um, doing music together. How so cool. So he, he, he did the music and I would write the songs and sing. How about that? And then he went on to be a real rock star. It's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty rad. You're talented. You've got talent in your family. Wild. You guys are creative. Wild. Who was creative, your mom or your dad? Uh, Both. My dad, yeah. was, my dad was uh, an artist. He, he could draw, which inspired me to become an artist. That's where I kind of got my art from. And then my mother was a singer and a writer. And so that's kind of where I maybe got that from. Jesus, that's yeah. cool. Now, with Puppy Dog Pals, did you create, you created that show, no? Mm-hmm, yeah. Did you draw anything? Did yeah, I did, er, I did early designs. I did early designs. And then, you know, Disney has everything at their disposal so i just i did initial designs of pugs and characters and then gave them to them and then they brought in like artists from all over the world and said you know this is what we're going for and and then once we had those artists and i worked with them and we shaped the the designs and the characters and yeah it's such a sweet show isn't it great? I like yeah. that they travel. They went to the Great Wall of China. That's a good one. That was the pilot. I wrote the pilot. Oh, no yeah, way. That was the very first one. They went to the Great Wall of China. And that came <laughs> from a very interesting place. When I was a little kid, I used to love cereal, like Captain Crunch and all that. And at one point, they had this thing where the... Remember how they had prizes in cereal? 
Oh, yeah. Cool. I was like the highlight of my life. Right? Yeah. Sometimes you just eat the prizes and screw the cereal. <laughs> but one of the, when, for one time they had a run where the prize was stickers. Uh-huh. And the stickers were like the eight wonders of the world or 12, oh. whatever the wonders are. You know. How many are there? I think, six, let's just say eight so I don't four, look five, stupid. Five, 17. Um, but they had like, they had, they had the Sydney Opera House. They had like the pyramids. They had, and I was just a little kid. And it planted a seed in my mind. I'd, I'd love to go to all those places. I'd love to see all those because they fascinated me. So when I, I did Puppy Dog Pals, I thought, I want kids to be inspired to see the world. Yeah. So every episode we wrote, almost, I'd say more than half of them, I made sure we went somewhere in the world that, that kind of, you know, would hopefully stimulate that in a child. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I yeah. love that. I like yeah, that about wild. them. They go on adventures, which is really cool. Everywhere. They go they go to yeah. China. They, they they go all over the world. Yeah. Getting into mischief. Yeah. Bingo and Rolly. Bingo and <laughs> Rolly. They're so cute. Yeah. Aren't they cute? I yeah. Love those Pugs. dogs. Yeah. Thanks. We even have the toys that they You bought the toys? Of course. Oh, Huge wow. fans. Moms Thank listen you. to this show. They know you. They know me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Thank love you. you. Yeah, it was it was you know, it was... Um, and you did spinoffs and shit, too. There's like... Well, we didn't do spinoffs, but we did five seasons. Wow. We, normally those those kids shows at Disney do like usually one or two seasons. Mm-hmm. And then they phoned me up. They said, um, <clears throat> we're doing a season three, which is great. And I was like, great. And then they said, we're doing a season four, which we never do. And then they said, we're doing a season five, which is outrageous. And I was like, <laughs> great, bring it. But when we first started the show... I said to my showrunner, I just said, you know what? My gut's telling me we're going to do five seasons. I said that to him right at the beginning. No, uh, you did. I did. And we did. We did five seasons. Isn't that wild? Yeah. It's a good show. The tone of it's nice. The pacing of yeah. it is nice. It's not like snarky. It's not trying to be too cool for school, you know? Which yeah, it's, it's like, like you said at the sweet. beginning. Keep. I made sure to, I wanted to keep it silly and yeah. fun. And, you know, there's little life lessons in there, but it's not too preachy. And then we also put a lot of stuff in for the adults yeah. who have to watch with the kids. <laughs> so we put a lot of little hip, hip references to other movies like Die Hard. And, yes. you know, we, we'd find little pop culture references to insert into the show for the adults. So Yeah, I like the way. I think Bob got a girlfriend at one point. Yeah, he got married. The final the final episode, Bob Bob gets married to her. Yeah. What? I think I think they had a kid or they adopted or something. I oh forget. my God. Yeah. I gotta get into season five. You gotta get there, girl. Because you know when your kids are watching stuff, they just watch the same shit over and over yeah. again. We yeah. have to progress to a, a season five. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it it's it's wild. It's like I go on I go on YouTube, and the first episode that I wrote, um, they go to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I look, it's over 100 million views. And I'm what? just like, this little cartoon that I wrote has more views than anything I've done my whole career. Right. <laughs> It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. I know, but I'm telling you, like, because I watch all these kids' cartoons, yeah. and, um, Either they're trying, there's there's something about Puppy Dog Pals and its simplicity and it has a heart to it. It's, yeah. It's not stupid. It's not like trying to be cool. Yeah. It's like, it's it's got a heart. You can tell. That- it's got a heart. And I wanted to make it sort of clever too, that there was sort of a, like sort of a joke or a, a clever like kind of twist to every story. So even though it's for young kids, they sort of go, oh, I get it at the end. Yeah. You know, like something- yes. Something triggered a bit of a mislead, but then it turns out to be not what they expected. It was interesting too when when I sold the show to Disney. Um, you know, one of the executives took me out for lunch, and she goes, "You know, Harlan, this is going to sound weird, but Disney's never done a cartoon with dogs. That's working weird with puppies." And I go, "No, no, they've done 101 Dalmatians, ladies." Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, those are movies. Disney's oh, never yeah. done like a television cartoon with puppies. Yeah. And I just went, how did nobody, like it just seemed so obvious. So just good timing and, you know, so, yeah. yeah. That's so show business though. We were like, it seems like a no-brainer. Then they, they usually won't do it when yeah. it's a no-brainer, but 
dude, that's awesome that they yeah it was it, it was really Disney. amazing yeah dang dude you're dang. so big time so <laughs> i'm not big time they are yeah but i'm just you know happy that it happened and you know, it was a little rewarding because I studied animation in college. Oh, okay. And my teachers there gave me a hard time because I was super silly. They mm. wanted me to be more, you know, Disney-esque. They, they sort of pushed all the students to follow the Disney model, and I was more like the Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali. Like, it's animation. Let's explore. If I want a cheeseburger to float yeah. onto an elephant's eye, I want to do it. Yeah. But like, no, no, do Mickey, do Donald. And so they gave me a really hard time and pretty much tried to fail me. And then turn around to all these years later, I'm the guy that has a hit show on, <laughs> on, Disney. on Disney. So it's like. It's ironic as shit. Yeah, I, I, I love that. That's rad. Not to be vindictive, but I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Would you ever do like um an adult swim type of cartoon, like an adult. Yeah, I've cartoon? pitched a whole bunch. Yeah. It's it's frustrating because you know with the hit like Puppy Dog Pals, and then I went out and and um, I put together a show. I got all these guys to do voices on. Like I did a demo with Theo Vaughn and Tom Green and all these great. Um, um, oh God, who's the the Australian comic? I'm blanking on his name. The dirty guy. The I know you're talking oh, about Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries, yeah. All these guys, we, we did this, you know, and it, it's like, it's so hard to sell anything in LA, yeah. you know, even yes. if you package it up. But I've probably put together four or five adult type shows and nothing, you know. It's so weird. But I've that's a, a narrow market, maybe. It's know. just tough. You know, I've, I've had a couple where we, I wrote a pilot. But to get anything on the air, it's just mind blowing. It's 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 such a lottery. So it really is. Yeah, I it's mean, a it's a Herculean thing, and the fact that you got five seasons of Puppy Dog Pals is pretty. It's crazy, fucking incredible. But just to get it, I, it was in five years of development before it even made it to the air. No, oh yeah, I've heard that. So I actually yeah. worked in animation too before, yeah. I, like when I was like twenty eight to thirty two. Yeah, and I heard they. Their nickname for Disney animation was Mauschwitz. <laughs> it was <laughs> because it? they work people so hard, apparently, supposedly. Oh wow! And just the the amount of attention to detail that goes into every page, I heard of like and of um, dialogue, even like for their films. So the five years of development yeah. of a cartoon is really yeah. crazy. It's a long time. It's a long time. You usually don't want but... to waste that much money, right? And time. Well, it's not money. It's more time. It's it's yeah. like they just it's like hey we want uh, three drawings of the puppies okay here they are and then six you know three months later hey we looked at the drawings oh right it's like well why didn't you look at them the next day after I hand so it's a lot of waiting for people executive but I think that's common with any project you know yeah. movies TV. You know, so many things that creative people do sit on the shelf for years Forever. and then finally get made, you know. This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time – all in one place, all on your terms. Squarespace is super easy to use. You just set up one of their professional website templates. It's customizable and it's easy to update. You can use Squarespace to sell your own merch. Just design your products and production, inventory, and shipping are handled for you. And if you want to sell your products in person, you can do so by connecting a Squarespace reader to the Squarespace app. And keep your orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with your online store. Squarespace is all around a great product for business owners. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash WMMA to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. Give HelloFresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week. 
Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. I love HelloFresh. The ingredients are delicious and the meals are just fabulous. Well, I would never make these recipes unless I had HelloFresh. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, for a limited time, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WMMA free and use code WMMA free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life available for a limited time at HelloFresh.com slash WMMA free with code WMMA free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. You're a movie guy too. What do you do? You like doing movies? So. I just I just um, finished directing a movie that I wrote uh, fourteen years ago. Oh my god! We just finished. I just wrote. I wrote, directed, and starred in it, and we're just editing it right now. Like fourteen years later, we just shot it in October. That's called wild. Wingman. Yeah. Oh, that sounds crazy. Cool. Yeah. Wow. So it's uh, some other example of things just languish and sit yeah. and you know it's it's just it's just got to be patient. I know that's you I have know? no patience for for showbiz like that. Like I don't like I, even when I worked in animation, I get so annoyed at like how long it took. Like you know, you labor right. over the script and then you have to do another pass, and now the fucking the guy up here doesn't like the what you did, and now yeah. you have to rewrite the whole thing. And at seven, you're starting the rewrite at seven p.m. and you're like, God damn it, dude! Like, and it's you, so if someone like you only has half a day too, because you can only come out at night, so that's got to be even more. <laughs> Maybe that's my cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, the like stand mom. stand up vampire. <laughs> that is perfect. a good concept. Let's do it. Yeah, let's actually. make a, a cartoon stand up. You could be a stand up vampire. vampire. That'd be perfect though. Let's, but, let's go. Yeah, as long as that chair is one of the characters. Oh, for sure, dude. For sure. Remember the chair on Pee Wee's Playhouse? Yeah, Cherry. Cherry. So this somehow this chair could have life to it. Yeah, Pee Wee's Playhouse was an anomaly for a television show. That was like a legitimate children's morning program that i grew up watching as like yeah. a, a pre i was like a tween or whatever early tween, teenager yeah. and you're like how the fuck did that make it on the air because i think it made cool. it because it's so imaginative that's the yeah. thing it was so it's almost that was almost one of those undeniable yeah you know just you you build that set with talking chairs and talking flowers and puppets it's it's like some things just as soon so as you cool. build them, it's there's no choice. It's got to go. You know? Yeah, yeah. He was so, uh, that was cool. He was so cool. Wild. Yeah. He was so cool. It sucks his life got ruined by like one incident. You know, like now if someone got caught doing that, you'd be like, big deal, right? Oh yeah, you'd probably boost your career. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. Hey, it's yeah. a whack off guy. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. High yeah. five with a glove on. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give him a series. Right? I know, because now you could do like OnlyFans and it doesn't ruin your career. Right. It's, it's a look wild. at all the people who got famous doing sex tapes. He sort of just missed yeah. him and Rob Lowe. Didn't Rob Lowe do like yeah. a sex tape or something? Yeah. But I th wasn't his might have been with underage girls. Wait, will you Google Rob Lowe sex tape? But those guys kind of were on the back end of when it was still like, you did something sexual? Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Right? Even though every household in America has a stack of Playboys and Penthouse magazines, you dare do something sexual yeah. in America? Well, not only that, all the executives that are making these shows are scumbag. Right. Not all of them. But, so they you know. had they, had Pee Wee relieved himself 15 years later. Yeah. It probably would have been Pee Wee's porn house. I know. And it yeah. could have, it could have been a jump start to rebrand his career from like the children's yeah. house to like, you know what I mean? Like he yeah. could have probably parlayed it into something He could have cool. gone from the playhouse to the mansion, like to a version of Hugh <laughs> right. Hefner's like Pee Wee's mansion. Oh, you know? poor guy. I think we just came up with our second show. I know. That's I two. Know. <laughs> the, chel the children's television host that gets caught. And then, yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer. Because he, he passed away pretty recently, right? Like a mm. year or two. That yeah. sucks. And he had to live like this the rest of his life in the shadows because he was like shamed so much from that. Well, I think wasn't there some, I mean, I don't want to shame the group. I think there was some other stuff too that didn't, was there? didn't some other weird stuff let's come up? up. I don't Paul, know. That, Paul Rubens. I'm just look going up. through my head, but I, I, I don't know. You think so? I thought I heard there was some, some other weird stuff, but I, I don't know. Indecent expo. Well, we know that one. 
But what else happened? I think time? I think the problem is, you know, if his Pee Wee's Playhouse was an adult show, I don't think it would have been that yeah, that bad. The, the fact that show. he was affiliated with kids, yeah, and even though yeah. he didn't do anything with kids, the fact that he was doing something so adult and sexual, I guess it sort of creeped everyone out. You know, it, did, it yes. didn't match like kids guy that acted like a thirteen year old like adolescent now in a porno theater. Yeah. touching himself it just is like you know touching battery cables to the wrong you know no, it was just like, it's not a good look i guess it's yeah. like um there's like a children's guy blippy i don't know if you heard of blip i think blippy's like a kid's by love the way him. a sex act in west hollywood <laughs> i know right the, oh, bli- yeah. the blippy. blippy getting yeah. blippy uh, but he like I don't know. There's some video of him shitting on something oh, or spreading his butt cheeks. Blippy. And, yeah, and it's, <laughs> it was like a big deal. And, and they oh. had to recast because Blippy oh, hit it to Netflix, God. and they like re. I actually I didn't care. I thought Blippy's great. <laughs> this guy created a bunch of stuff on YouTube that my kids loved. He was Just adorable. The, it had to be the name Wait, Blippy. Will like, you Google like, what he did? He shit on his friend. He shit on his friend. Yeah. yeah. Back when that uh, it yeah. was the Harlem Shake videos were happening. He did one of those, but at at the you know that sure. sound, nice just that do. name Blippy sounds like <laughs> yeah. that should be the name yeah. for dumping on your friend. <laughs> like he gave let, him the you want to do the Blippy tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I do. Get the funny hat. <laughs> I know. Get the goofy hat. Put the suspenders on and blip me. Like, blip me good. First eat that Mary Callender's meatloaf and then blip me. <laughs> like, just make it work. Give me a big one. The blippy. Yeah. Give me that uh, Lincoln Give me log. the blippy. Yeah. Yeah, he regrets the viral video in which he poops all over. Of course he regrets it. I mean, he's like, trying to have a career and the fucking the stupid hell? video is coming back. Who, how is that in anybody's wheelhouse to do that? He shot, yeah, how does he shit on his friend? It's not sexual. I'm assuming they're just being slap dicks, right? Like, he's just... Yeah, he's, like, standing on his toilet. The other guy's, like, on the ground, and they're, like, dancing to the music. And then at the climax of the song, he just, the shit the... sprays out all over his friend. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad, does it, Harlan? I mean, how, who hasn't given their friend a blippy? Wow. <laughs> you didn't do that back in Canada. Flippy. The blippy. It's, uh, sadly, it feels like one of the stores you'd see in a food court. The Blippy? Yeah. Yeah, like Panda Express, New York Fries, yes. and Blippies. Blippies, yeah, and m- m- muffins. Yeah, and or Orange Julius muffins. to wash down oh, the Blippy. Yeah. I miss Orange m- Julius. M- m- muffins. Remember, b- they don't b- have b- Blippy. <laughs> 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 That's when you got the runs. All of the b- 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 Blippy. Blippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Orange Julius had like raw egg in it. Really? Isn't that gnarly? I, no, it did. Yeah, That's it what did. caused the foam. <laughs> I think so. It was raw egg. And I we love it. Like, it's the only, really, the good. only place in the world that I know of where you can go to work inside of a citrus. Yeah, that was so cool. I thought that was so cool as a little kid. You're like, I want to work at Orange Julius. My one folks day. work in an orange. Yeah, it's so like dope. most people go to a building, rectangle, whatever. Yeah. You stand in a stupid giant orange all day. Yeah, it's like, pretty embarrassing. Whoa. I think the only worst thing was hot dog on a stick. Yeah. To be that employee seemed really embarrassing because they made them churn yeah. the lemonade and it yeah. was very sexually suggestive. But they didn't have to stand in a hot dog. Fuck. Imagine dude. if all places like were like that. Like if you worked at a, you know, like a gynecologist's office <laughs> and you had to stand in a JJ all day. <laughs> Or what's the guy? Who are the, the ones that do proctologists? In an a hole. What did you ever have a shitty job? Like, what was your shittiest job before you became a famous comedian? I had two. I had. Uh, I was one. I went one day as a carpet cleaner. Oh, that sounds horrible. And I went, and we we did like a few apartments, and then the the final job we did that day, we went to an old lady's, like a Scottish lady. Mm. She was a sweet old Scottish lady. Mm. She goes. Oh, my carpet's all, can you fix me carpet? And it was white. It was a white shag carpet. Mm. And this thing looked like someone did a blippy all over it. <laughs> <laughs> like a Human sc- or animal? A Scottish blippy. Hey. The worst kind. They've got hair in them. <laughs> uh. A Scottish blippy. Yeah. She had blippy stains all over her carpet. <laughs> Big, fat, they had freckles on them. A Scottish freckled blippy. One of them was playing the bagpipes, standing on the fucking ottoman. Yeah. But anyways, 
we go and and the guys I was with are like, oh, for an extra hundred bucks, we'll give you the special cleaner and the shampoo, and we'll we'll get all those blippy stains out, and, <laughs> and it did nothing. And at wow. the at the end, she goes, I don't think it looks any cleaner. <laughs> Fired. Excuse you? <laughs> my vampire. Sorry. I'm oh, you need blood. to feed? I need my blood. You need to oh. feed here. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Someone get me some uh. tibia grease. Uh, can I tell you how stupid I am? One time I heard an interview you gave. I think I've told you this, but I just think people should hear it. Oh. One time you gave this interview and you said that you, um, you're like, I bought an Arby's chain. And you go, in case this comedy thing doesn't work out. Right. And you said this about 15 years ago on some interview. And I believed you. And one time on like a long drive, Tom and I were, we were still like broke ass comics. And I'm like, well, let me tell you what Harlan Williams does. This guy, he owns an Arby's. We got to do that, babe. We got to own a franchise. <laughs> How about I a Blippies? You, you want to buy a Blippies? <laughs> yeah, I should buy a Blippies. We yeah. should start a Blippies. Well, we got to start the vampire show, the For other sure. show, and For then sure. a, open a Blippies. What can we sell? I feel like a Blippy is what? Like a, it, it's like a, a hoagie, but instead of meat and cheese, it's like a big German sausage. Wow. It's like sauerkraut, like a. It's more like a big German meatloaf, really. <laughs> it's a. Bl- We're talking about a log of shit here. <laughs> let's not. Let's it's a not, chocolate. Let's not make it delicious. I I don't want to sell one. Imagine the yeah. fat people we'd have to hire to oh make them. Oh my god! I know the blippies. Come on, chubby, get to work. <laughs> You're on the clock. Blip. So fat. You know, I went to Disneyland with my kids recently. Oh, People God. are so fat. And I'm not just saying that. Like, yeah. like four years ago when we went, it wasn't that bad. And I think the, I think people got depressed during the pandemic and just really started to eat their feelings, you know? <sighs> They're so fat now, dude. No, it's it's been before that. Because I yeah. did Universal Studios. I'm talking 15, 16 years ago. I did New Year's Eve at Universal Studios and... What, I, what I, venue? The the there was a it was a com, there was a comedy theater there. Oh back then. shit, I don't dude! Know. Yeah, what's his name had one from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that's no, a no. Ticket. This was, this was that even guy. different. This this oh. was a Universal theme park in Florida. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, definitely. and um and I just remember watching the people walking around, and eighty percent of them were overweight, and the kids. Yeah, it's like wild. the kids' knees were buckling, and <laughs> you know. Wild. One, some of them were walking around eating like a zebra femur, like just like, <laughs> so gnarly, crazy. Yeah. But how come like I mean Canadians aren't that fat? Yeah, they are. They are now. It's they're the getting same. there. It's all the any right across North America. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's tough though, man. It's you, you almost. Yeah, I mean, you got to blame the source, but yeah. you got to remember we live in a society where they just keep inundating us with. Eat this, eat that. You eat know, your blippies, yeah. I have I go to the gym in Los Angeles and I've counted between my house and the gym, I pass I think twelve fast food places. Whoa. Chipotle, Wendy's, Burger King, In and Out Burger. Like it's insane. Yeah. And so even when I'm trying to stay healthy, yeah. They're that drive you. through, you're you're driving the gauntlet, and that's what the face of America is. You're at yeah. all times being inundated by a sign, branding, yeah. commercials playing in your head. It is so hard to stay dedicated to your diet. It's yeah. no wonder. That's true. You know. Well, plus I think like if you go to Europe, it, they don't, it, the portions are way smaller too. Like I read at Euro Disney, the, I don't know why they put a fucking Disneyland in France. Like I don't, yeah. they don't, French don't want us. But but anyway, yeah. the, the fries that they sell, and Euro Disney, it's like half the portion of what they sell in the U.S. It is? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because they don't eat as much. It's they interesting, though, but I think, I think the French are a lot more into butter and sauces and rich, creamy, like yeah. in, their, in, their, in, their, in their food. So I don't know what it is. But I it, think it's, it's a fat-shaming culture, too. I think they like openly fat-shame you more, and that's a really good thing. In Europe or here? In Europe. I don't know. I lived in Germany for a long time. You did? When? Yeah. Back in the 80s. Why? Why? Well, just for Why fun. Why not? For fun times? They got some of the freshest blimpies <laughs> in the world over there. What, what, what part? I lived in Cologne or Cologne. Cologne. 
and I was doing um, computer animation over there. <coughs> Excuse me, computer animation over there. What? Yeah, so That's I lived so there for crazy. a bit. But, um, Do you speak German? A little bit. I, I, was, I was actually learning it while I was there. Oh, that's cool. And it's a tough language, but I, I got like a huge vocabulary, but I was just starting to learn the grammar and starting to string sentences together. But this was, oh God, so over hard. 25 years ago now. And did you, how many German babes did you bag while you were there? It's tons of German babes, yeah? Uh, actually, just one. Oh, right, that's good. And be, but the reason it was only one, because like we fell madly in love. Aww. Like I almost stayed there for her. Like it was, it was like, full on like madly in love with her and yeah. what happened i had to come back i i, I always i i did my t- jaunt to a hollywood i always wanted yeah. to follow like I, I think you're probably the same when you do what we do there's a sort of burning ember inside you where it's like mm-hmm. part of you goes oh that would be fun but to really pursue it i think for people that are legit there's a deeper burning that goes you have to do it Mm-hmm. It's not only oh you can do it or you want to do it, but for I think people that really pursue it and get there, yeah, I think there's a spark inside of us that goes you you were born to do it. You, there's a voice in you. Yeah, there's a neurotic even a, 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 a obsession. I would say that yeah. it, it was obsessive, and, obsessive, and I would ruin all my day jobs and ruin. I I think I unconsciously day job. I had so many jobs. Like I unconsciously destroyed every other option yeah. in my life so that I had to just be a stand-up. You know what I mean? Okay, I was okay. like, okay, like I went to law school, I dropped out after two weeks. I oh, went wow. to grad school for philosophy, I stopped doing that after a semester. Wow. Like, I fucked up so utterly that I was like, I guess I guess I have to be a comic now, you know? Right. Like, I, I think I sabotaged. But was there a voice inside you that just said you didn't have a choice to? I mean, yeah, it sounds I was a like fucking maybe the, maniac. Yeah, but my right. immigrant parents, I feel like my mother and my father, are that pressure to be like a doctor, lawyer, something yeah, good. Yeah, mama muffins. Yeah, mama mama muffins. Yeah. yeah, like, and I'm an only child, so I think Ugh. they were like, only you have vampire. to be yeah. normal. Yeah, yeah, vampires. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to be an only vampire. And um, yeah. wow. Yeah, I just had to like, yeah, but yeah, I and then you're obsessed with it. Like, I still am obsessed with stand-up comedy. Yeah, I love well, that it. that I tells me it. that you have that spark because. Yeah. It, it's a long journey. It's oh, not yeah. an easy journey, but when it's like anything, whether you're a rock star, or a scientist, or a, a biologist, you, you, some people get lucky in life and they're born with a calling or they're yeah. born with this voice inside yes. that says, This is what you have to do. Yeah. And it's not as easy when you don't have a voice and you just go, what am I going to do? Oh, I guess I'll work there. Yeah, I there guess is I'll... not that. So it's, we're sort of lucky in a way that we have a calling to do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's why I left Germany. I just, I just knew my voice was pulling me to be there. It's almost like I didn't have a choice. And well, so... can, we, can we call this German broad up? I mean, where is she now? I don't know. I don't know. But, man, she was freaking Let's amazing. Find her. She was... Uh, she looked like a young Faye Dunaway, like just. What are you doing? We'll, yeah. Let's fucking call her. Go to Munchen tomorrow. Fuck. What are you doing? Yeah. Right. I, who yeah. knows what she's doing now? She probably has a family and nah, kids. She's probably divorced. She's done. Maybe. Second, who knows? second husband, third, Maybe. whatever. She come to LA Even now. Even more appealing now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah used up. And- Used up, tired, leather, fat. I had a hard fat. day at work. Get me a blimpy. <laughs> But the Germans don't get fat. She's probably still in good shape, you know? They, oh, she they, was stunning. They make sport every day. It was horrible, too, because I went there and I, I, you know, computer animation was in its infancy. And so I went there and started working on this computer animation, but I had to learn it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something I had trained for. And in college, I studied classical animation, which everything's hand drawn. Mm-hmm. So now for the first time, I'm in front of this this giant console and all this tech equipment. And the guy who works there as a technician is this great guy. I love him. Like the nicest guy. He's teaching me everything. And I'm there being this student and he's, 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 he's showing me everything. And guess who comes to pick him up every day after work? In walks this stunning blonde, six foot tall, Faye Dunaway lookalike. And I'm just like, and I'm not that guy. I don't. Yeah. Like I'm like she's beautiful. She's nice. 
Great. Yeah. Good for him. And I love this guy. So I was like, good for you, dude. Yeah. And so we sort of started, got integrated into their social circles. And next thing you know, every now and then I go out to a drink with them and some of the other people from work. I'm being super respectful. She's beautiful. She's nice. And then one night we're at like a house party and I'm just like sort of doing my thing, blah, blah. And you know, you can feel when someone's sort of looking at you like yeah. energy. Yeah. So I'm on the other side of the room. I'm just talking and I, I look over and I'm like, and this girl is just like, literally like a tractor beam, like just mm. staring at me. And I was like, it almost like knocked me. It was like, I almost like went, you know, and I just drifted across. I go, what are you doing? Yeah. And that was it. It was what like, are you I, doing? I knew you we, said that to her. I go, like, what are you what doing? Are you doing, what? you fucking weirdo? Well, I was, I was like, so I go, yeah, because like, what? Was she like, I knew what the I stare doing? was more than just, yeah. hey, I knew the stare was, I love you. Oh my God. And I was just drawn across. And I, and I, and I just said, what are you doing? Because cause of him, I was like, you can't look oh, at me like that. Oh, right, right, right. And but they ain't married. It don't matter. Still, I'm not Unless that guy. There's a ring on it. I don't want to be that guy. So wait, I so respect what, but people's. But what happened? Did she? So did we she make just. Her... I said, "What's going on?" And we we were in love. Dang. Like it was just. And so we sort of had to like, we we had to go through work. We had to go up to um, Hamburg to like a film festival, and she came along as an assistant. Mm -hmm. And while we were up there, it was just like, we said it, we're in love. We're, we're, and we made out and I had to come back and, you know, I believe in honor. And I, to I told the guy, I said, can I take you to lunch? And I, 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 I sat him oh down. God, I was so nervous. Were you nervous? I was nervous, I but I was, I, was, I was proud because I did everything honorably. Yeah. And I said, I said, I don't know what to tell you, man. We, here's what happened. We locked eyes. I can't stop it. She loved me. And um he was very gracious about it and so but it was it was intense, man, but it was it was so Yeah, but um it all came to an end eventually. But yeah. But she's there now, dude. Giselle Bunchen. She's in with a bunch of kids on her third husband, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're he's on his way out. He's yeah. she's probably like single and she's still skinny and hot and she's like yeah. she's like i live in the mountains now it's just a quiet life my children are grown but i'm looking for you harlan i've been watching you watching your movies i watch puppy dog paddles every day stare at me <laughs> no, no, stare at me <laughs> tom fuck off stare at me <laughs> i'm not that guy tom you know i just said it um, i've always wanted a vampire she's like I think I love you, Holland. Come on, we can find her. We can get on fucking. We probably could, Facebook. but I don't. I don't want to um, open that wound with her, and I don't. I don't want it myself. It, it, it was passionate. It was fiery. I it mean, was, that's all the more reason to get back in. I mean, look. It was, imagine it was, if you could revisit her now with all the 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 sexual skills you've acquired in the last that she taught me. No, but, I'm but you were in your what twenties back then. Yeah. Now you're a grown man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 famous, successful, wealthy. Yeah, that doesn't matter to me. That that means nothing to well, you. But to a woman, she's probably like no, because she like, she knew me before all that. So fortunately, that better. means nothing. But she's a hardling you're so successful. I wouldn't now. want that if she said that to me. That would It'd be repulsive. That would yeah. be like I, that's that's not what you should predicate your connection no. with someone on it's gross that's I agree. just that's just superficial she's like it's like being with a fan you wouldn't want to do that but. yeah now now we could celebrate each other's achievements and success yeah. i'm all for that that's beautiful but if it's predicated on that no thanks can i tell you something i always thought about is like okay here we go <laughs> it's blimpy time it's blippy um okay so like imagine you could find this german lady mm -hmm. and then and then, like, are you afraid of? I would always be afraid of, like, oh yeah, but then I have to get naked in front of them. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not 20 years old anymore. Right. You know what I mean? But like, what if they're just, what if they're just like, ew? From my side or her side? Just her side. Like, would you? Would that be a concern for you? Yeah. Yeah, you'd be like, oh my god, I'm so old and like fucking. Oh know, wait, gross her now. looking at me or me yeah, looking yeah, at her yeah. nudity? Y she looking at your nudity? With well, okay, I I would be okay because I stay in pretty good shape. Okay, I'm, I'm still. But not... she knew you in your prime. Right, but I'm yeah, I'm still okay. I'm still like okay. not that bad. Okay, like, I'm in good shape for where I'm at. Okay, 
And um, yeah, I would hope she'd be okay, but you know. Yeah. Would you judge her body? Would you be like, oh no. Yeah, I think yeah. to be honest, yeah, it's, it's like, like she's so especially compared to what, I mean, you yeah. know, back then she literally could have been on the cover of Playboy. Like it was, it's she wild. was stunning. It's wild. She was stunning, like perfect. On blue eyes, like literally, pull up on a picture of a yeah. young Faye Dunaway. Oh, that's, I love Faye That's Dunaway what she looked too. like. Let's look at her now. Yeah, let's look I at her. Faye and then later we go to your castle and oh, suck the blood <laughs> and have a blimpy dog. <laughs> she's so beautiful. I, ma- I imagine. Yeah. Did like, you have cafe mit Kuchen every day? Look at that. Oh that's my sort gosh. of what she looked like. Yeah. Stunning. So those German broads, so attractive. Yeah. Crazy. So stunning. So now you're beautiful. making me miss her. Thanks Call a lot. Call her. Listen, it's the internet, so you can find anyone. You know what? I did reach out to her like probably about 20 years ago or f- something I, when when Facebook just started. Yeah. Um, we actually did a little like, I actually found her and we did a little, hey, how you doing? And, and? it was like, you know, three or four little exchanges. And then in my head, I'm like, I don't have the right to step into her world after all this. And and she said something like, I always love you. And I said the same thing, but the ship has sailed. You can't, you can't just inject yourself into somebody's, you know, things change. All right. Yeah. I'm just saying, what if you were meant to be with this bride? You don't even know, dude. I mean, I don't well, know. no, because, because when I left Germany, she, the plan was that she was going to come visit me in, in Los Angeles. Mm. and through a series of events, she kept delaying. It was like, mm. I'll see you in three months. Okay. Oh, I can't come for another three months. Okay. I can't come for another two months. Okay. Mm. I can't come for another three months. Okay. Yeah. She almost kind of beat the love out of me. Like mm-hmm. every time she moved the line, mm-hmm. I became more distant, and I felt I felt the light fading. Of course. And so I finally said, you know what? I can't do this. You're either coming or you're not. And she said, I can't tell you when I, so I ended it. Mm. And then like six, seven months later, out of the blue, she goes, you know what? I want to come. I'm ready. So I said, you know what? We loved each other so much. I'll try it. Let's go. And she came. She was supposed to come for three weeks. I sent her home after two days. <gasps> what happened? Not, not in a mean way. Well, what but what a change? Just you it, was the, dead. the spark was gone. We laid beside, I couldn't even make love to her. This gorgeous we it, it just you know because it's wow. most of it a lot of it's mental right yes yes and so the dynamic had shifted the, I wasn't seeing I had held out all that time waiting for her. like I mm. didn't I was with no one else and <coughs> excuse me the whole you know things change and so sadly mm. it shifted and um and so that's so that's so why I'm sad. saying I wouldn't I wouldn't want to reach out to her and, sure sure but the memories are beautiful oh my yeah. god. That's so nice that you had that, though. Well, just the night we told each other we loved each other, we were at, we were in um, Hamburg at a film festival, and there was this, I think the final night, there was this outdoor film festival, and it was like right out of a movie. They set up a giant screen. It must have been 50 feet high, and it was out in the middle of a giant water fountain, and they were playing a black and white um, Burt Lancaster, and not Burt Lancaster, um, Elizabeth Taylor, and what was her husband's name? No, she had a few, no? Yeah, but the like famous ten? one that she remarried like three times. Oh, uh, I don't remember now. My Anyways, name. he was My in 1984, so but but this, this, this. Jesus. This um, Richard, Richard Burton, Burton. Yeah. yeah. This is black and white movie of them in love and kissing. And, and we were standing in the shadow of that, and I'm like telling each other we loved each other for the first time and she said look one of us has to move one of it and she said i'm gonna come to la i was like and here's a, it was a so beautiful and dramatic so a lot of great memories yeah it's funny how that can really only happen in in your youth you know like in your 20s i feel like. i don't think so oh well, no i'm married so that's different. right my, my days are over of like that kind of moment you know well what I mean? not really you can <clears throat> you can oh yeah yeah. I've seen Segura. He's out there on the Chinese invasion. Oh, that little monkey. <laughs> that little bearded salami now, sandwich sucking freak. He just woke up and farted this morning. And no. He took a shit. And I ta- we on, talk about blimpy? our shits. He took a big old blip. <laughs> oh, on me. God. It's different, Harlan. When you get married, you know, it's it's there, that 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 excitement of like, right. oh, well, do we love each other? Do we, like, you know, we, you know, we've two kids deep, 20 years together. But doesn't it together. change? It, it changes to a different level, right? Doesn't yes. it become sort of this deeper Real. bond? Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. 
So the infatuation, the butterflies maybe right. aren't flapping around, but there's a moth sucking on a mothball <laughs> somewhere, you know? <laughs> right, but that that the butterfly stage, I'm saying, that is the, right. that's youth. That that you really can't. Yeah. You can't be that naive. Yeah. Can you? Like in your 50s, 60s, like no way. I think I you'll know. be surprised there's going to be moments that come along where where he'll be doing something or you'll be doing something and unbeknownst to him or you you or him will just be standing back and going, fuck, do I love that guy? Oh, I do that. Like like the butterflies yeah. are going to be there, but <sighs> I don't know about that. it's just, no, but, it, it will. There'll be some, as, as the journey gets <sighs> deeper, it'll, it'll, they're there. They just, <sighs> yeah. They, I'm saying, I think our kids suck the, the joy out of us, you know, because we have children, it's like. Yeah, it's time for them to move on. It's, they're old enough now yeah. to leave, five and eight. Like, Are there any gypsies in your neighborhood that you gypsies. could? Gypsies. That is so funny. That was always the threat growing up. My parents are Hungarian. That we're oh, going to sell you to the gypsies. Yeah. You see the I gypsies. would just give them to the gypsies at this point. They sound like trouble. They are. You don't need any more money. Just hand them <laughs> off. Give them to gypsies. Give them to the gypsies. Mm-hmm. You get them working in a cornfield. Do they have good corn picking fingers? Of course they do. Get them Nimble. out there. Nimble. Yes, cob tiny. Them, cob them up. Teach and they're them how to strong. Cob. They're strong children. We put them in jujitsu, so they're oh, very they could fit. Be, they could be shucking. Mm-hmm. They could be corn shucking. <laughs> I mean, they got, these sounds like good children of the corn you got. Get them, gypsy them up, mm. cob them out, shuck them around. Mm. Let them grow up and blimpy. Goodyear mm. blimpy. Good. <laughs> like big jumbo flying blimpies. <laughs> <laughs> Harlan, we went around the world and back on this journey on this podcast today. <laughs> Kind of like what you do at night when you That's fly right. out the castle window. That's right. I fly out, the chair turns into my cape, and I do comedy in the night. Yeah, it is sort of a Doctor yeah. Strange sort yeah. of cape. Maybe yeah. it is a cape, and it's not even a chair. It's just this cape floating here. Like. Yeah, I love it. My dark, my darkness. Um, I'm so pumped that you're in Austin. I hope you come back again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. a riot. And um, have fun. I hope you have fun while you're here. Yeah. I will. I already I already had fun just being here with you. Good. Thank you. I adore it was a you. Blast. I adore you. Okay, guys, oh, the likewise. Harlan Highway podcast. Listen to him on there. Thank Anything you. else? Harlan, you want to talk about? We want to plug. Um, you want to plug your blippies? Just uh, check out my um, my website for oh. my comedy dates. Go and ahead. then lastly, I have a, a website called harbling.com where I actually draw on t shirts with Sharpies, like original pieces of art. And what? you can buy the T-shirts, and if the originals are sold out, you can buy print. So people love them. That's why I'm mentioning it. Can I see it. this? Can we look that up? Yeah, har- harbling so cool. com, and I do all these um, original designs because I, I get what a, a little great idea. I get a little upset that everything's a brand name, you know. So oh my gosh, that's yeah, so I just, cool. I just do all these drawings, and then people can wear them and have them, and just kooky. If you go in archives, you'll see most of the uh, gallery of different images. There's like Look there's like three three hundred on there. All these crazy drawings. Gosh, so. you're like one of those rare comedians that can also draw. Like yeah. you, uh, Melissa Villasenor, and then what's his name? Yeah, Melissa's great. She's great. And Kevin Nealon. Kevin Nealon is, yeah. is great too. Amazing. And um, so was wasn't McDonald? Was it Norm? No. No. Maybe I'm thinking of Norm someone else not. who just died. Norm was not, no. not a good artist. No? You knew, did you try? Did you make fun of him for his artwork? No, but we were good buddies for a long time. Aww. Yeah, yeah. So He so, was so funny. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Anyway, this is really dope, dude. You're very Thank multi-talented. You. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you exist. Um, Thank you. You're the best. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. All right. I love you. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.